Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up everybody? So I am here outside of Anaheim in a pretty park checking out the Super Cruiser from Nacto Electric Bikes. Uh, it's called the Super Cruiser and we would think of it as like a uh, kind of a low impact, maybe like a grandma kind of low speed uh, bicycle, but they have a different take on the concept of a cruiser. Uh, so this Super Cruiser actually is a fat tire step over uh, kind of like a bad boy <laughs> sort of uh, electric bike. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in and talk about some of the specifications. All right, so definitely it's a fat tire electric bike. Uh, you can see that very clearly from the tires, 26 by four step over frame. So this is definitely meant for more of an active uh, kind of a person who can get their leg up over uh, that standover height, uh, which is pretty high. I want to say that that's uh, about 34 inches. Uh, we have all the full specifications and measurements on electricbikereview.com, by the way. Um, but to talk about the bike in a general sense, this is kind of, you're getting a fair amount of equipment on it, but this is from a company that kind of specializes in uh, distribution. Uh, so Nacto is uh, the brand of this bicycle, and Nacto has a lot of really uh, entry-level bikes, uh, but this one I would not necessarily classify in the same category. Uh, it's from the same company, but those bikes are, you know, sub 1000. This particular one is $12.99 uh, for the price on this bike, which is pretty good for everything that you're getting. You know, the fat tire, the 500 watt motor, mid-mounted battery, 4812. So yeah, uh, we'll talk about some of the details. Let's just go ahead and jump in because you kind of get the picture. Uh, so the tires are uh, a CST BFT 26 by four. <laughs> so to break that all down, uh, CST is the, the brand of the tire. Uh, it's from the parent company of, I think it's Changshen Tire, which owns uh, Maxxis, if you didn't know. And BFT is the model of the tire. I can only imagine what that stands for. And 26 by four is the measurement. So it's a 26 diameter wheel with a four inch wide tire. So that's pretty wide. Now with that, you get a lot of surface area that you can get, in, get into or out of some sticky situations. And this is about as sticky as I could find in the area. This area is kind of an industrial spot with a couple of homes on the outskirts, but I found this park, which doesn't seem terribly busy. Uh, yeah, there's some grass along here, some dirt over there on the baseball diamond and some very minuscule hills that we can kind of jump around so that's what i was able to find so we'll kind of shred this up a little bit and see what we can get out of it um, but yeah the uh the wide tires provide a pretty good traction but it's also pretty good for cushion uh, so you'll notice that the bike has a suspension up front but it has no suspension in the rear uh, the tires kind of act as a small bit of suspension they kind of get a little bit of cushion out of them so it does keep the comfort fairly high so this is a shimano uh, disc brake caliper uh, I think it's a dual piston caliper with a 160 millimeter rotor that's on the front as also on the rear. So you've got a nice set of brakes there from a good name brand. Uh, coming up, the fork. Uh, so this is a suspension fork. You have about 90 millimeters of travel uh, on the stanchions there. These are a pretty wide stanchion on there that goes into the steel lowers. It's also a steel uh, stanchion there. Um, the thread, uh, this is a threadless um, headset coming up over here, uh, inch and an eighth, uh, onto the stem. So this stem has about 90 millimeters of extension there, kind of coming out, so it brings the rider position a little bit forward, so you're a little bit more part of the action uh, when you're riding a bike like this. On the other side of that, you would have comfort, but in this case, you get more technical steering capability because you have more of the rider's weight uh, forward. The handlebars are fairly flat. There's not a whole lot of um, flair to them. They have like a minuscule uh, upsweep, or not upsweep, <laughs> sorry, minuscule rise coming up just a tiny, tiny bit uh, from there to add just a little taste of some kind of comfort in there. But you do have some pretty good uh, grips here. These are actually a lock-on grip, which will stay on there pretty well. Uh, not a whole lot going to get that off other than the small three millimeter tool. Uh, so those will stay in position pretty well. And they have like this little ergonomic edge right down here for your palms to kind of help you out when you're riding on some rough terrain, help you keep a grip, but also help you keep riding the bike for a longer total duration because you won't be fatigued uh, as much. Uh, so I kind of glossed over the uh, the fenders, actually. Uh, I have a nice wide set of fenders, like 4.25 uh, inches worth of fender. It's a plastic fender, but it's a pretty strong one. Uh, I'm fairly critical of plastic fenders sometimes because they wind up getting 
uh, kicked around a little bit, but in this case, they're a nice thick plastic. I think they would have to be in order to keep that width and not fold or get warped. Uh, but these are a nice thick plastic and they come into this metal rod uh, down here for mounting. So I actually like these fenders, they're not so bad. And as if it matters, it keeps the weight low. <laughs> Certainly not the first consideration for a bike like this. Um, but uh, continuing on with some of the mechanical features, uh, the brake handles are pretty wide. You have a nice four inch wide, uh, or no, sorry, not four inch, four finger <laughs> grip on there. So you could totally get your hand on there to pull on the brakes. I do have a motor inhibitor in the brakes, which is a nice uh, safety feature for the electric system. Uh, so this is the thumb shifter uh, right here. This is kind of bottom of the barrel for Shimano, uh, but it is the Shimano SIS uh, thumb indexer. And that goes into the six speeds that you got in the rear of the bike. Let's go ahead and jump down there and take a look at it. Uh, so this is a fairly small set of gears here. You got 14 teeth on the smallest cog and then 28 teeth on the largest cog of the six total speeds. Uh, so not a whole lot of range in there, but it's enough to get you going. And in all honesty, if you're on a bike like this, and if you ride like me, you do a lot of throttle. <laughs> uh, so on the front, you have a 52 tooth uh, chain ring uh, up there, which is keeping a fair amount of attention. Uh, not a tension, but keeping a fair amount of tension <laughs> when you're riding the bike. Um, also, you have a Shimano Tourney TZ. Uh, that is the derailleur system. Uh, so within the tourney lineup, uh, this one has, it's a step up from the bottom of uh, Shimano's offerings. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a Shimano system. So plenty of bike shops would be comfortable working on something like this. On the back of the fender, you do have a reflector over here. You might think it's actually an integrated light because there is a headlight up front. But in this case, it's just a reflector uh, in the back. And this isn't a bad position to put the reflector um, because in some cases you'll have a reflector down here, but it can be obstructed or it can be knocked off if say somebody is pulling the battery up or if you got cargo back here. So I actually like having the fender uh, mounted uh, reflector right there. Uh, so the cranks right here are a 150 millimeter crank. Um, the pedals, by the way, there's nothing too special about them. These are an alloy um, aluminum pedal. Uh, so these will last for a pretty long time, uh, which is nice. Um, but these cranks are a 150 millimeter crank. Usually you see a lot of 170 for a normal size. So in this case, they're kind of short. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you have longer legs uh, like myself and you wear like a 34 inch inseam, then these are gonna feel like you're tiptoeing. However, if you're a little bit shorter of a rider, then it actually might be a good fit. Fortunately, that's a fairly universal part on a square taper, so you could switch that out fairly easily. Um, well, a bike shop would. You do need a specialty tool to accomplish that. It's not complicated, but it is specialty. Uh, so some last things to talk about on the mechanical side of things are generally the frame. So the frame does have a fairly high step over. In this case, the idea of calling it a cruiser is rather a misnomer in America. Uh, we would call this more of maybe like a relaxed adventure bike, I suppose. Uh, the seat actually can get fairly low. Let's go ahead and pull on the uh, release there and we'll kind of push this down. It's fairly stiff inside of there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and close it up. Uh, so the seat does rela or relax fairly low. You can see that it's much lower than the position for the stem. You got a good, you know, four or five inches or so worth of total height. So you can put the seat down and then rock the bike like a, a moped or something with a throttle. And it does have a pretty good top speed. It's over 20 miles an hour. I haven't seen the top speed yet. They tell me it's 28. And I guess we'll find out here when we get on the road. <laughs> You'll be with me and we'll find out. Uh, but you can use it that way. And that's kind of how what I would do if it were my bike, I would use it in this direction because on account of the short cranks, I wouldn't be too comfortable pedaling this for a terribly long time and also considering some of the other equipment on it I'd be fine just tooling around with the throttle um, so let's go ahead and talk about the seat real quick we'll finish up the mechanical and then get into that slam and electric system that I'm eager to talk about so let's pull this guy up all right so the seat post itself is a rather peculiar uh, diameter the diameter of the seat post is 25.4 a lot of times when you see something this small it's about 27 by 2 uh, but in this case, you're looking at 25.4. Uh, so be aware of that if you wanted to change it out and get maybe a suspension seat post or something to give it a little more cushion. Uh, but in this case, the seat isn't so bad. Uh, you have a fairly wide, about seven inches wide worth of footprint here and some pretty good soft gel and some very small springs uh, in the back right in there. Uh, so if you pull up on this latch, then that will allow you to tilt the entire seat up to get it out of the way to access the battery pack. So um, that's how the seat post works. 
trying to think if there's anything else I missed on the mechanical system that we were talking about. You do have pretty wide uh, wheels and hub spacing. I guess I could mention that for a little bit. A fairly wide diameter, or not diameter, sorry, a fairly wide width on the uh, rims from side to side, uh, as well as 135 millimeter hub spacing uh, on the front and 175 in the rear. Uh, so that's pretty wide. <laughs> you know, you have a wider fork to kind of accommodate that. Um, so that definitely gives you a lot more, uh, a lot more space to work with on the fat tire uh, side of things. Uh, so let's jump into the electric system. I suppose we can start at the very front with the headlight. Uh, so this is a generic headlight, but it does work. There is a little switch. Let's go ahead and turn the bike on um, in its totality. I'll do that. Press this one. So by pressing this little button right here on the little control, that will turn on the headlight up in the front of the bike. It's fairly bright outside right now, so maybe you can see that. Um, there actually is no indicator up on the display itself. It's only on your little control switch right here, uh, which by the way has a horn, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So this display uh, tells you quite a bit of information. Right here you have like a scaling energy bar for your battery, so that's your battery level right here on the tippy top. Right below that is your current speed. Um, that of course is tied to the wheel rotations of the motor. So let's go ahead and tilt that a little bit, kind of dance around and see if we can get that going. There we go, something like that. Uh, right below that is the pedal assist level. Pedal assist of course is controlled by the up and down uh, arrows on the remote attachment on the left side. So if you press that up, it'll go up into level five or back down to zero uh, if you'd like. Oh no, actually this one stops at number one. So if you want to turn off pedal assist, you turn off the whole bike. <laughs> so at any time you have the bike turned on for power, uh, you've got to have it in pedal assist, it would seem. So uh, yeah, that's a programming thing that, uh, that NACTO has chosen uh, for this bicycle. Um, I've seen this display on several bikes where it doesn't do that. Uh, but that's the way it is on this one. Uh, on the very bottom, you have a variable display for your odometer. If you press the power button just lightly, it'll cycle through a handful of metrics like your trip set, um, a timer, and a, you know, a few other things. Um, so uh, that is the display. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the battery. The battery is a 48 volt, 12 amp hour battery. That's mounted right here in the middle of the bike, right behind the seat tube. Uh, so let's go ahead and fold up that seat. We'll turn the bike off. So this actually controls the ignition. When you turn the bike on, you turn it once, and then that will turn the bike off for ignition. You gotta press that guy in and then rotate it a little bit more. And then that will release the pin so that you can pull the battery out of position. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll pull that out. There we go. So this is the battery. Now it's not terribly, um, doesn't have a whole lot of flair to it. Just says cruiser on there and you can take the battery with you if you wanted to bring it into the office or charge it at home or something along those lines. Let's go ahead and slide it back into position there. All right, cool. Put the handle down and then we'll turn the pin so that we can put it in position and then turn the ignition so it's on again. Go ahead and lower the seat, clamp that back in and then we're off to the races. Cool. Uh, last thing to talk about on the electric system is the motor. So this is a 500 watt motor uh, from a company called AOMA, A-O-M-A. Uh, that's a newer company to me. It's one that I'm not as familiar with, uh, but this motor definitely puts out some power. It's a fat tire motor that is physically larger, uh, but also has some pretty good windings uh, so that it can pump out the power necessary to move this bicycle because it's heavy. You know, this is a heavy bike. So yeah, we talked about the electric system. We talked about the mechanical system. Uh, let's go ahead and let's jump on the bike and take it for a ride, which is my favorite part. Okay, here we go. Let's get some momentum and jump over this hill on the roots. Ah. <laughs> okay. So something tells me the city of Anaheim isn't putting a whole lot of uh, investment into upkeeping this park. So I think I'm all right to thrash around a little bit. <laughs> In the tall grass, the uneven dirt, kind of going up the hills. Let's see if we can get over the roots a little bit, kind of bounce around. So I wouldn't say that this is a terribly good shock. You know, the shock feels like it's bottoming out on some not so tough terrain. Uh, let's see, let's go over here and kind of get on there. But, you know, the, the off-road capabilities is not something you'd typically envision for a bike called the Cruiser. 
Um, but uh, it can do a little bit. You know, I'm doing a little bit. You can cut through some fields or something like that in your area. You know, it could do some. I, I like doing stuff like this. It's kind of fun. Let's get into the kind of like the packed dirt over here in the baseball diamond. So I'm keeping a fair amount of uh, keeping a fair amount of balance on the tires. Um, the wideness of the tires, steering is pretty good. I definitely wouldn't uh, you know, recommend the shock too much, but you know it works for pretty easy road stuff. Let's go ahead and get in the sand in the play area. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> okay, kind of lost some momentum. Uh, let's see. Let's pedal a little bit. All right, with a little bit of pedaling, you can get it going. It doesn't take much, and once you get some momentum built up, then you can get through the sand pretty easy. Uh, let's see. Let's jump from the sand. There we go. Wonder who put these tracks here. All right, let's jump up into the dirt again and over here, kind of up the hill. And let's get back onto the road. <laughs> That's really where the uh, you know, where you typically take a cruiser. <laughs> we will say, kind of jump through that handball court up front. This has been fun so far. I mean. If it's fun you're looking for, a bike like this would totally do it. Let's jump in here real quick. <laughs> and up again. All right. All right. So it's definitely fun, I would say. Across the bridge. All right. Looks like we're good on the crosswalk. Ain't nobody around here. You know, the, with the weight being a little lower, I mean, it's not a big bike other than the sta standover height is kind of high. But other than that, it's not terribly big. So it is pretty maneuverable on those big fat tires when you get into some of that terrain. But even on the road, it ain't so bad. You know, it kind of takes a little bit to get, the use, get used to. It's not as, I wouldn't say it's agile the way that a normal bike width would be, uh, but it does okay. Um, I'll go ahead and point the camera down at the, uh, down at the bottom bracket area. All right, here we go. I got you guys pointed down at the chain ring, the battery, and the uh, empty case for the controller that kind of looks like a mid-drive. Okay, I got this guy cranked up all the way in pedal assist. Let's go ahead and take it for a spin. I had to get at least a little bit of off-road uh, in this industrial side of town, but fun stuff. It actually picked up a lot faster than the other Nakato bikes. Uh, I think this pedal assist system on this bike is a little more refined than, say, the Camel or the uh, Classic, but yeah, good performer. Okay, guys, thanks for checking out the Nakato Super Cruiser with me. It's been a lot of fun to be here in Anaheim checking out the Nakato bikes here at their service center and shipping center. Uh, so yeah, uh, check out the other electric bike reviews uh, for the Nakato bikes by visiting electricbikereview.com where you can see the full specifications and the full write-up and measurements for those as well as this bike, the Super Cruiser. And if you'd like, you can compare it with all sorts of bikes within the industry or you can participate in the forums if you're a little more social and want to participate in the community. So thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.